Hi everyone and thanks for watching. I'm Linda V. Taylor and I'm here today with Corey Pearson in McKinney, Texas and this is Linda's Electric Quilters on YouTube. We're working on an amazing project today. Right, and before we get started, make sure you give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel, and share this with your friends. So Linda, what are we working on today? Okay, I just got this cute little cross stitch pillow top. Okay. I think it's a pillow top. I'm okay. not sure, but I'm making it. It's going to be a pillow yeah, top. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. She just said, do whatever you want. So I'm like, okay, I will. So first of all, I'm going to add some borders to it. Okay. Okay. And so it gonna, is all hand done. You're going to add borders. While I'm going to add borders machine. while it's on the machine. Okay. And guess what? I'm They're guessing, minky. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> I love this minky. So um, because it's small, I'm going to add the sides okay. first then across the top, okay. and um, then we'll go from there. And you're going to do that all on the machine? I'm going to do that on the machine. Oh, then it. we're going to do some amazing quilting on this. Oh, I can't yeah, wait. Yeah, really fun. All right, let's do it. Okay. Okay, Corey, it's a little bit of a challenging project. Okay. I mean, you know, you could just quilt it. Right. Meandering, you know, whatever, all over it. But I want to add these borders. And so, number one, I have to have uh, lining mm -hmm. and batting big enough, you know, for the whole to the to be the finished size right. with the borders with on the it. Borders on it, yeah. So I have to put that on, and um, this just has like the focal point is just like tiny, really. Right. Well, compared to everything around it, there's a lot of space. Yeah, there's <laughs> a lot of space. So yeah. we're cutting that down, and then we're going to just fill it in so nicely. Okay. So um, I'm just going to put this minky because it's a small project. I can just put this right up here. And I'm just going to sew down this side, and then I'll do that on that side and then cut it. Oop, we're going to have stuff all over. But we'll keep it inside the quilt. Okay, How's that? that's I mean, fine. We'll even get all over. <laughs> then we'll put that in the bottom and the, then the top. Yeah, I want to show our friends exactly what we're doing, because you can do this on a great big quilt. I've, done, I've added uh, like to a queen and made it a king. It's mm -hmm. just amazing. First, I stitched down the, this part. And if this was a big quilt, of course I wouldn't be stitching all the way around. I would just be doing it, you know, on each roll. Right. Okay. And even as you're adding this on the side, you wouldn't add it all the way down the side. You would just be adding as you're going. Okay. And I'm just going to use that foot width. I'll bring up my thread here. And we're just using the standard foot, right? Just I'm just the using the foot. standard foot, uh huh, because okay. it will go over the minky just fine. And you could use your channel lock here if you want to make this really nice and straight, but I found that this just fabric is not wood, you know? Right. And um, just kind of easing in the minky a little bit. It's a little more than a foot width, actually, just because I don't have to have exact measurements when I'm finished. I'll just square it up. And I want to make sure that I catch all that minky. So I'll just come down to that point, okay? And then I'll add this on the other side. And then, I'll, then I'm going to um, go up across the top. So I'll get that added on, the, on there, and then we can um, look at it across the top. And I will cut it for you so you can see what Minky does. Okay. Okay, now I can see where I need to cut it here. So I'm just going to go along here like this with these wonderful batting scissors. Mm -hmm. I have Linda V. I Taylor engraved on them. The yes. scissors. Now, uh, I'm just going to kind of do this out here so you can see see how, see how that extra stuff that kind of comes off. Oh, yeah, the joy of Mankey. I know, but we don't need a but vacuum right working. now because that's going to be covered up. We'll just leave it inside, a exactly. little extra bonus, okay? All right, so we'll get those done, and then we'll do cross the top. Okay, I've just laid that. Now, remember that when you lay these borders on, of course, you have to put right sides together. And this is two layers of Mankey, so it's going to go a little slower. That's okay. We can handle it. And then we get it on over here. We'll come straight across. Sometimes when I've been working with this minky, I will um, actually baste it. And then I come back with my channel lock and make a nice straight line. So we could have done that too, because working with minky is just a little harder. Right, it has a little bit of a stretch to it. It does, so, so we're just kind of easing it in. You were probably, of course, not even born when I was in stretch and sew. <laughs> 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 so I kind of like working with stretchy stuff, as I always have. So 
There we go. There we go. Perfect. All right. And I will take, I will now put the belts on because we're going to do some other um, stuff with the Statler. And I will go across with this channel lock because I want that to be nice and straight. But it, I won't have to deal with all of the easing in and stuff like right, that anymore. Yeah. So that's what I'll do. Okay, um, I just used scraps of batting right. for this, so yeah. I, I knew that I was going to be short. So you're going to show us a really cool way to yeah. do this right on the machine, right? Yeah, I mean, in to the spirit of it. putting things on while the quilt's already there, okay. um, we have this heat press batting tape. Okay. Very cool. So I don't have that. I'm going to get you it. You need to get you some yes, before you leave to go back. So they have the batting tape. They also have heat press applique tape, which is new. Oh, that's nice. So you can do nice. some stuff while, uh, that's on there. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this batting mm -hmm. and I'm going to match it up to the side. So and we so we don't just have butt holes. it up so we don't yeah. have holes. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to take this heat press batting tape. And if you feel it, Linda, you'll feel that one side's a little bit more gritty. Oh, yeah, definitely okay? gritty. Even. That's the side that's going to face down towards the batting. Yeah. Okay, so the gritty the side. Heat that's stuff. where the glue's okay. at. Yeah. So I'm going to lay this around there, try to get it in the middle, and lay that right down. And then I'll trim it off at the side. Okay. So I'll take some of your handy dandy batting scissors since we've been using those. <laughs> there we go. And if you just want to trim that for me, perfect. I can lay that down, get this out the way, and I'll either have my iron plugged in or I'll just make sure it's nice and hot before I unplug it and bring it over here. Okay. But I'm going to grab my iron and I'm just going to let it hover right over this. And I'm kind of doing a little bit of a press. I have my hand semi underneath it for this side, but I'm just going to do a little press all the way through. I'm not going to hold it down on there because you don't want it to melt to the iron. Right. So it's a little bit of a press all the way down. And nothing too much because obviously we don't want to stretch the fabric. So is and there uh, steam or anything or it's just hot? I'm not doing any steam, um, okay. but it's just nice and hot. It's on the linen cotton setting. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so a little bit of steam's coming there. Actually, we do have the steam on, but that's okay. <laughs> so it doesn't make any difference. It doesn't make much of a difference now. Okay. So with this one, we're just kind of semi-pressing. Cool. But yeah. now for using poly batting, uh -huh. you want that staying right above it. You don't want to press down on poly batting with a hot iron. Okay. Yeah. So it does work on poly. Yes. You just can't. Yeah. yeah you don't want to press that down poly with it. Would, oh, yeah. Yeah. Right to your iron. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm just going to bounce kind of back and forth, all the way across, and then I can trim off those batting sides if I need to. Okay. Then I'll set my iron over here to the side, and you can see that that's not going anywhere. And we can that start is doing so nice, because then I don't have to worry if it's moving. Cause, exactly. Yeah, I put it up there before and just trimmed, you know. So then we'll trim so that we'll all the way across. We'll just trim this there. off all the way across. Look at that. La 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 la. And I'll Here's let you do that. Scraps. And but that way, yeah, it's not shifting on you. It's going to stay in one spot, and it's good to go. Okay. And it works great through washes and everything. I just had another idea while I'm looking at this, and you were putting that on. Just came to you just like that. Just came to me. Those are the best yeah, time. Yeah, because this is what I do. Um, <laughs> While you're adding these, whether it's in minky or whether it's not, right. holy cow, you could just put your extra batting under there, stuffing, you oh, know? Oh, yeah. Definitely give it and some texture. And then you could just do lines. Oh, wouldn't that be cool? That would look amazing. Kind of like a faux punto look. Yes. Just stuff it in there yes. real quick. That's amazing. Awesome. Oh, you and these ideas. What they just come say? to you. We didn't do it this time. <laughs> we'll do it next time. <laughs> so I'll just put the other. Minky on the bottom, okay. and then we'll be ready to do the quilting. Okay, that's what I'm excited okay. about. I am so happy the way this is looking with yeah. this screen. I'm loving it. The, I, I was kind of, I was a little skeptical. Not that I was, <laughs> not that I ever doubt you, but I was just like, okay, I wonder how this is actually going to turn out. But I'm oh, loving this green. It's awesome. Yeah. This hide. So what are we going to do on the inside? Okay. Well, first of all, I wanted to do a little frame okay. using the Statler, yeah. using one of my frames. I have several frames yes. on there that people can choose from, and I want to choose one. So okay. let's um, let's go and choose one, and then we'll do the boundaries okay. and um, watch it stitch out. Cool. So is the that first thing that we're going to have to do is draw a boundary around, okay. and then we get to move to the screen, and that's where the design work happens. Okay, let's put the boundary So in. I'm going to draw a boundary real quick with the head of the machine. And we're just going to check this this way. I'm just going to get all four points here. And then once that's good, I can close my drawing and exit my drawing. And okay. then we have our boundary on our screen. Mm -hmm. So now we can walk over to the computer and start looking at patterns. Perfect. So if we're looking on the screen here, I'm actually going to minimize our keypad a little bit here so we can see what's going on. 
But on our screen, I've actually gone through my patterns and chosen about six of your frames, six or seven. Okay. I've got all of your patterns. I love them. Thank you. And so the first frame that I know really caught our eye was this heart frame. Mm -hmm. I know we really liked that one. So if I left click on the frame, I'm going to say pattern to boundary. And now with the fabric that we've got, it's more of a rectangle than yes, a perfect square. Yes, it is. It's not a perfect square. So it placed the pattern in at, the, at a square. Uh -huh. So if I left click on the pattern, I get my purple handles that appear. And I'm going to left click and hold on this one on the right and stretch it over to fill it up. And then left click and hold on the one on the left and stretch it over to a little bit. Now, the only thing that some people are probably freaking out about right now is like, oh, you've got little pearls and they're going to turn into eggs. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, we didn't stretch them out too far, so they're still going to retain their pearl oh, shape. Fine. Yeah, I like yeah. them. So you can see here, if I move my machine around, that my crosshairs are ending up right there. Mm -hmm. And that doesn't leave you much room to do any freehand. Because no. if I travel around with the machine, that's Man, you have, what, a piano key right there that uh, you can put in? <laughs> maybe some people don't want to do a lot, but right. I, I have other things in mind. Right. So I'm going to go back to the computer. We're going to delete that one out of our CAD program right here. So I'm just going to delete that off. And let's try a different one. Let's say, let's go with this one right here. So I'll say pattern to boundary. I'll place that one in. I'll have to click on it to expand it out to the sides. Oh, I like that. I love this one. Yeah, that one's nice. Expand that out to the sides, and now if I look at it with the machine, the deepest part is going to be right there. Okay, okay? I could deal with that. But most of the time, that's where it's, it's going to be. It's back there, yeah, because so I that's wanted a good about a two-inch frame. Yeah. Okay, that's so great. So all four corners will have a little bit of a deeper section, which mm -hmm. isn't that big of a deal, mm -mm. but you have a lot of room to do a lot of freehand I out here. I can work around that. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, Linda, so this is the pattern that we're wanting to go with. I really mm -hmm. like the way this one looks. But I know you were saying that you were wanting something maybe a little extra with the pattern. Well, I do want to have an echo on the inside because I would like a little tiny space between the design and the freehand that I'm going to do. Okay. You know, I like it separated. Right. Um, and then I thought, I wonder what, what in the heck would it do if you did outside? Oh, I an don't echo on the outside know. as well? Yeah. I don't know. Let's try it. Okay. So if I select the pattern, I'm going to right click on it and come to Echo Pattern. And it's going to default to outside at a quarter inch spacing. Okay. And so it's calculating right now. There's some nooks and crannies in there. But so it's going to calculate to see what it can do. And oh, oh my, my gosh, goodness. look at that. <laughs> oh, that is beautiful. That looks really cool. That's kind of a Celtic look. Oh, we yeah. have to have that. So That's we have to have awesome. that one. So I don't want to have to exit out of the echo function to then go back in and try to echo something Which else. Which is what I would do. Right. Okay. So we have this button right down here and it says again. Again. Okay. So you just. So I'm going to left click on again. And what it's going to do is outside echo the one that we just did. Okay. It's doing another okay. echo around, which is what it's supposed to do. Uh -huh. We said again. But I'm going to say give it to me inside. So I'm going to left click on inside. And then I'm going to left click inside where I want it. So I want it right inside of this one. Left click. Okay. And just oh, like that. Oh, that is just exactly what I want. So if I click OK, it's going to leave both of them on the screen. And I want to drag and drop this pattern to show the users the and difference. our viewers the difference. I mean, oh, what two echoes what can, do can do on an outside and the inside of a pattern. You know, that echo on the, on the out, which was outside, right? Yes. And, and if you had a more complicated pattern, it would really get the lines. But this pattern is simple enough that it put it in there so beautifully. Right, it just made oh, it look perfect. Oh, I couldn't perfect. even draw it better. Oh my goodness. <laughs> so I'm going to remove this, and now when you do an echo outside, obviously it's going to come outside of our boundary a little bit, mm -hmm. so we need to play with our handles. So I'll bring this in, and I'm just going to kind of shrink this in to make sure it fits where it needs to, because okay. I don't want it going out of the boundary into the minky. And we might just do a little bit of a nudge here, just like that. Okay. And that's going to get placed in there. That's wonderful. And what was that nudge, by the way? Um, so you can nudge in Creative Studio with your um, arrow keys on your keyboard. Okay. So if I select, I can use my arrow keys. And there's a whole bunch of different nudges. If I hold Control uh -huh. and use my arrow keys, it's really fast. Okay. If I use my arrow keys just alone, it's a little just slower. Because I needed that, and then I use the... You know, the, the handles, handles and sometimes and it goes that way and this way. And, oh my goodness. And Thank then you. I can zoom in and if you use alt, 
and your arrow keys, it's uh -huh. even slower. Look at that tiny, oh, tiny nudge. Oh, very tiny. Oh, that's a really great hint for me. It makes a Thank huge you. difference. No problem. Yeah. It just makes a really big difference when you're wanting to center something up perfectly. Okay. Okay. Oh, let's sew it. Perfect. All right, Linda, so we have everything placed the way that we want it, so let's go ahead and start quilting. I'm so excited. So I'll move the machine over, and it's going to start where it wants to. Pull up our thread, and I'm going to hold those taut and press continue. And it's going to do whatever we placed in first, mm -hmm. so right now it's doing the frame. Okay. Yep. And then it goes back and puts the echoes. Correct. Okay. Let me pause that real quick, and I'm going to trim these threads because they're running all over the place on me. And resume. So, Linda, that is just stitching out super fast and super beautiful. I mean, you did an amazing <laughs> job digitizing that. Thank you. I think that looks amazing. I just threw it. I didn't digitize it. Oh, that's it. right. Yeah. But still. <laughs> that's, that's in my, you know, to learn stuff. <laughs> to digitize it, yeah. <laughs> but I think that just adds a little bit of pop, and I think it's nice that it's not super close here. Yes. So you still have plenty yeah, of room to do a lot of free hands. Yep. Yeah. Even when it echoes, I'll still have plenty of, to get around. Right. Because the peacock is really the focal point. Right. But this has just turned into an amazing yeah. project. I'm going to be sad to give it back to the customer. <laughs> I think I'm actually going to turn off this light so the people at home can see what's going on. There you go. That looks nice. You know, we all have projects like this that are just sitting in our cedar chest, some of us. Um, you probably don't have a cedar chest, but I, don't I do. I have a cedar chest, no. <laughs> <laughs> and things that are heirlooms to us, and we don't know what to do. You know, a lot of people just don't know what to do with it. Right. But it's precious hand um, work from generations ago yeah. that we don't want to lose, so. So we're coming up to the end here. It's going to okay. tie off. We'll pull up our threads. It looks like we actually popped out of one of our thread guides while we were quilting, which is okay. We can fix that, can't we? Easily. Real quick, just a little pop right back in there. Okay, so I've trimmed the threads. We'll click OK so it'll move to the next point. And so it looks like it's going in to do that inside echo. Okay. So I'll hit continue on there. It's just going to go in and do that inside for us. Yeah, I really like that. Yeah. Something a little, a little bit of a barrier to mm -hmm. separate your free hand from the design. Boy, once you get the idea of what the, I mean, what the computer can do, what you can do on the Statler. Right. It just boggles your mind. Well, the possibilities it does are endless. I just, yeah. But I still love doing my freehand, so I'm going to just continue to combine them. Alrighty. Coming up to the end on that one, too. That was quicker. Yep. <laughs> Pull up those threads. And that is pretty just the way it is. Yeah. I love it. Definitely. But I want more. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Well, we can make it happen. Okay. So it's going to come do that outside one now. Pull up that thread. Hold those and press continue. You know, these frames are such a good idea uh, around the squares and rectangles. Right. Even if they're smaller because oftentimes that's all you need and other times, you just don't want to do as much of right. the freehand. Like if I wanted to do, um, you know, mini stippling around in there, micro stippling, I just wouldn't want to do the entire square. Right. And so this just is, I found anyway, on many of the projects I do, this is the solution for that. And what's really cool is if you wanted to, you could, of course, just select all of these and save it as a pattern. 
So yes. you wouldn't have to echo it again. It's already ready for you. You're right. Yeah. I mean, because that was so much work. I know. So much work <laughs> to hit that again button and click a couple things. But how <laughs> cool. Yes, yeah. make that a pattern. Yeah. All right. Coming up to the end again. Perfect. And then we get to tie off our threads. Okay. And I'm ready for freehand. All right, Linda, so what are we doing? Okay, well, you know what? I need to outline just a little bit because I want, you know, some definition in there. I don't want that just poofing out of the project when we're finished. So okay. I'm going to use my applique helper. Okay. And it has kind of like a little keyhole here, which is so awesome because you can just put it on your foot, raise my foot here, and just go like that and down, and it holds your foot. It doesn't, oh. you can't fall out of it. I like that, okay. So, and, um, Notice that I have the bulk of it on this side so that my left hand can, my thumb can just go right there. Uh -huh. My left hand can just be flat. Okay. So I'm not holding on to stuff because I have found, and oh boy, over the years, this is so nice to have this flat because if I had held on to that, I wouldn't be able to, you know, open my <laughs> fingers because I'm getting older, okay? And you have an extended base on, right? I do have an extended base, yeah. yes, so it has because nice you've got to have that with your any of the tools that you use. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, much, much better if you have those. So you see my left hand just guides us around. I can stay right next to the embroidery. So it looks like I'm you're not going to go around the flowers. Okay. And I can kind of put some other little things in here as I'm coming along. Because I just want to get over to the other side. I'm not doing a lot of outlining, right. but if I don't do any, then I will just have that be sticking up, and I, I don't want that. And so you're doing this in regulated stitching? I'm doing it in regulated stitching. I like 14 stitches to the inch. Okay. And I'm not going to go around all the flowers because I'm going to come in later with some freehand in those, so okay. I know that that's... But I wanted to show you how I do that so I can get really close to the embroidery right. without going on the embroidery. Gotcha. And if you've got a big piece of embroidery, I mean, this isn't huge, but this is big enough that it would just lay outside of the quilt, and I don't want that to happen. Right. Okay? Okay. So then I want to go into constant. Okay. Well, I will do that for you. Okay. So I will take you out of regulated, and then I will put you into constant. Is there a certain speed that you want to be at? Um... 13 is probably okay. good. I'll tell you when I need to turn. Oh, I can turn it up you can right turn it here down. on yep. the machine. Yep, turn it up or down on the machine. Yep, I can. So now we're ready to do our freehand. Okay. And um, I, I don't really have, I have some things in mind. Okay. And the rest we're just going to wing it. So I like that. Yeah, I think this will turn out. I didn't mean wing, like, you know. I'm going to follow this back up first. Okay, I'm going to turn this down as I'm stitching just a little bit because I'm going to start. Whoops. I'm so used to turning it up. We're coming down a little bit like that. Yeah. And I am doing some feathers coming right out there. And I'm going to go around some of these little flowers and I'm adding leaves in between. Okay. So I'm just kind of circling them. That way I don't have to go around every little piece. Right. And I'm putting leaves in everywhere, just a leaf and a little. I know that's really small to see. See, it's just kind of a, you'll see it in a minute because I'm going to do some bigger ones, okay? Okay. Just coming in throughout all those flowers. Here's one you'll be able to see as I'm coming out here with some more leaves. And then I just put a center in it. Oh. Like that. And I'm going to come out with another flower. I'm coming around. And I'm going to put some little petals on it. Okay. Like that. And then I'll come back with some leaves. I really want this filled in quite tight. Right. This is not the Statler, you know. This is me. All you. All okay. freehand. Okay. Yep. Just coming around all of these. Coming down. Let's put another little flower out here. I just go in and do the center, okay. and then I do some flowers out around it. Everybody can do that daisy. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Just circling that. Just kind of coming in here. I can even put just some lines 
they have those lines of grass. Mm -hmm. Let's do another flower right here. Turn that up just a little bit. Another flower. Come through there and put some leaves out here. Echo. Adding a little bit more. Looking out in this area. Yeah. Sort of copying sort of the grass here at the bottom. Do you see how kind of grass in the in the embroidery. Right, yeah. That's what it looks like. I'm just continuing that. Just with sort of an S shape, and then I kind of go inside and then come out. I like it. I like I'm it. I'm loving it. Okay, now I'm going to come out. And I will kind of tell you how I'm doing those. I'm looking at what is already in there. Okay. It looks to me like it's kind of a teardrop. And then I'm putting a teardrop inside of it. And then coming around it with kind of a ferns like. Okay. I say fern, but you know, it's just part of the keep peacock. Right. So it's echoing what we already have there. Mm-hmm. Not echoing. I didn't mean that. It's resembling. Right. <laughs> I was with you. Okay. And I can go in on some of those areas, which will also kind of knock that down a little bit. You're just going right up to that echo line that the Statler did oh, for yeah. you. Oh, yeah. Just extending those out. And I'm not going to get in this place again, so you know what? When I get in places where I know I'm not going to ever be there again, mm -hmm. I just fill it in then. See how I go back in there like that? Yep. Come out with another one here. Oh, she's just flowing out here. Look at this. That's great. And then I'm into my little leaves again. Let's come out here and, and extend a flower. Is it okay if I don't quit and I just keep going? You're doing great. Okay. I'm just hoping that's not a test at the end. <laughs> I'm just circling those flowers again. Putting a leaf in here so when I get the chance. And let's do put another little flower over here. I'm going to come out right here. And I'm going to do feathers off at the back. And I'll echo those. And I love birds with a little bit more headdress. And I'm going to put some texture drop dots. Okay. Okay. Now, as I come out, I want to. I'm going to slow this down because the texture dot is. Um, I just kind of make kind of like a circle, right there, and then just stay in the same place. You see how that adds texture in there? Yeah. Isn't that awesome? Just a little dot. It adds just a little bit of texture. That's that all amazing. I need. That's all I need. Just a little texture dot. She's got a lot more headdress than she's putting on there. Okay. Oh, wow. I really like what I have so far. Yeah. And I could just continue and just have flowers everywhere. But instead, I'm going to kind of um, echo 
what I have here, and um, I think that I can get some curves in here so you can see what I'm what I'm going to do. It's kind of I like to call it, um, and I'm just going to get over to the side. Okay. Okay. Turn up my till I'm right there. Okay. So now I'm going to echo this. And then I'm going to do um, a, what I call a dimensional echoing, which will, and I can add feathers and everything else while I'm doing it. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I'll sort of go into my Zen, and I, I come in deep. I come in deep where I need to, and out, and then stay close on the inside. And I'm just going to come around the headdress like that. Some of these areas I'll come in. and smooth out, and other areas, like in these flowers, I'm going to make them deep. I call it deep echoing, Corey. Mm -hmm. And you'll never see that in hand quilting. Right. Because we just sort of made it up as machine quilters. And here I'm going to come over so I can make some areas smooth, you see? Yeah. Okay. Now I'm not going to get past there again, am I? Right. So, Okay. Okay. And I'll come over here, and then I'm going to swing out and come in. Swing out and in. So is this the, this is the dimensional echoing? Yes. Cool. You see how I swing out there, and yeah. I can actually follow that over. Let's just finish this part right here. Nice and smooth. All right, if I come around here like this and come in, I'm going to come out. And here's where I can make some feathers. Mm -hmm. Trying to only use one hand so I don't get my hand in there. <laughs> I'm going to come around this and come around again, and then I'll come out. With some feathers. So it's kind of a meandering. Mm -hmm. Very smooth, which is why I wanted that echo around the frame. Right. To set it apart yeah, it even more. Yeah, definitely keeps the frames you know, yeah. away from what's going on in the inside. Now watch what happens as I continue to echo as I swing out and drop back in here. And I'll just do this just to fill this area in here. Out and back in. Out and back in. See how that just made its own pattern? Yeah. I'm just following the outside of this echo back around so I can fill in the area down here. See if I can get another feather or two in here. Yeah, I can. In fact, this feather could actually fill in this whole area here. Let's just make it so. There we go. Look at that. Following that back around. I love the way the freehand kind of 
sets off the individual stitching a little bit better. Yeah, definitely. I'm loving the deep echo and the dimensional echo that you're doing. Oh, it's, thank you. It's absolutely gorgeous. It's going to be very interesting um, to see this piece as a whole. Sometimes right. when you're on this, you're just doing one thing at a time. Yeah. You're like, oh man, is it going to be okay? Oh boy, when you get done, you look at it and you go, oh yeah. Yeah. That well, worked out. Because you're not sitting right over the top of it. Yeah. When you step back and take a look, it's like, wow. Now see right there, I can come out again with another little feather. You can just put feathers in wherever you want them. Let's just fill in this area with feathers. Come out right there, start echoing again. Whenever you're in trouble, you just follow a line. We didn't have any pinwheels in there, but now we do. <laughs> oh, am I out of quilt? I guess I am. So let's see what we have. Linda, I absolutely love the deep echo that you did on here. Thank you for showing us that. You're I welcome. think it just really changes the way that it looks, but also the texture of this. There's got mm -hmm. it. What kind of batting did you put in here? <laughs> I, I have a, I have a hunch, but what kind of batting? Do you put <laughs> it's in here? Linda's choice, and it's by Hobbs. Right. And uh, they they made it for me years ago because I wanted a thicker batting, that, something that show quilts could really um, hang nice and right. flat. Yeah, because And it nice works fantastic batting. for wall hangings yeah. and everything. Yeah, everything so just pops it's 100% beautifully. cotton. But I absolutely love it, and right. you can also see the way the echo sets off. The yes. other kind of quilting yeah. from the peacock, and that's I think why I wanted to echo. Awesome. Thank you. Well, thank you so much for coming down here and filming with me. You're I appreciate welcome. it. You're very welcome. And thank you to everyone at home. Make sure you give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel so you can stay up to date with our videos. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.